Alright, this is Gunstar Heroes for the Sega Genesis. I actually got this game in an interesting uh, way, kind of like my last review. It's a Craigslist story, and, and one day on Craigslist I managed to get three Sega Genesis, 30 complete games, and I got all of it for $30. And uh, the first thing I saw on Craigslist was this guy had a Genesis and Gunstar Heroes. I was like, how much for Gunstar Heroes? He's like, well, I just want 20, uh, 25 for all of it. It's like, well, yeah, but I'm just after uh, Gunstar Heroes. It's like, well, you can just take it off for 15 bucks, I'm like, deal. So I went and I picked it up, and, you know, I was happy to get the uh, complete copy of Gunstar Heroes. And then I checked Craigslist again, and someone else in the same town I live in had 15 complete Sega Genesis games for $15. So I'm like, screw it, I'm going to go pick that up, too. And as I'm walking away with the box, you're like, actually, we got these two Sega Genesis here. Do you want them? It's like, sure, how much do you want for them? I'm like, just go ahead and take them. It's like, wow, really, thank you. It's very nice. So, uh, I sold one of my Sega Genesis for, uh, 30 bucks on Amazon, so, in essence, I got two Genesis and 30 complete games for free. Unfortunately, uh, Gunstar Heroes is the only game of note out of that. You know, I got a couple other games that complete that I just had loose copies of, so that was cool. But, this is also one of the best Sega Genesis games ever made. And it's brilliant with co-op. This is a two-player game, by far. Uh, playing through this game with a friend is amazing. There's a lot of variety uh, throughout the levels of the game, and it's, oh man, it's just such a blast to play. The graphics and the music are some of the best on the Sega Genesis, and the hook, like the unique feature about this in the gameplay, is the weapon combinations. If you look at the little HUD in the upper uh, bar of the screen, you can see that I've got two of the tracking weapons. And those orbs on the ground are the other uh, variations I can put together. So you just pick up and mix and match, and then you have the option to go through and like, if you just need the tracking, you turn on just the tracking. And then if you need just the fireball, let's say you can turn on the fireball. Or you can have a tracking fireball. So it's really interesting uh, having the ability to mix and match your weapon combination on the fly. So however you like to play. You know, a lot of the time I like the flamethrower. And then there's the machine gun, the laser, and the tracking weapon. And, uh... This, this game's amazing. You got your little slide maneuver, and you can do sort of a jump dive, which does a lot of damage. And, uh, yeah, I strongly recommend owning this. If you have a Sega Genesis and you don't own this, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Um, I actually played through this game with my friend Arthur Perkins, who is, you know, probably one of the greatest people in the world, and, uh... He's also a big fan of Gunstar Heroes. We've actually gone through and beat this game, and we're going to record uh, that. This was actually back in October. I, I think I recorded this footage here last year as well. But now he lives in Alaska, so that sucks. But we were going to record a gameplay video, like the whole game all the way through, uh, going for Gunstar Heroes on hard. So we beat it on medium, and we're practicing on hard, getting to where, you know, it'd be something worth showing off. And this this game's amazing. There's a lot of variety in the levels. Uh, you start out and you get to choose which levels you want to go to, which I like. It's really cool. You uh, choose between four different levels, and once you beat all them, you, uh, I believe, pick out of four more. And there's a really interesting spaceship shooter stage, which I've only, uh, you know, played through with my friend. So, one player controls the ship, and the other person controls the shooting. Really cool. Really fun game to play as two-player. Uh, this is probably my second favorite two-player game, you know, next to the Lost Vikings. But this is a uh, different style of game, so this probably be a lot more fun for more people. But the different bosses are just 
so much fun. Like, look, you got these two dudes in this mech, and, you know, there's a guy that stands on top of a jet. He's one of the bosses. There's uh, a level that's based on a board game where you have to roll dice. There's just so much variety and fun in this game. It's really amazing. Uh, the game goes for about 30 bucks online, which I would say is a little steep. But if you see it for like 15, definitely grab it. I would say for 15 dollars, this is definitely worth it. 30 dollars for a Genesis game is more than I'm willing to pay. Uh, but this game is worth it. But I personally would not pay 30 bucks. That's because I'm cheap. And, uh, <laughs> your character there with the uh, red shoulders on his uniform uh, looks like a Team Rocket member. That's the first thing I thought when I uh, picked this game up. I was like, wow, this guy looks like a Team Rocket dude. The story is drastically different than the Japanese version, but it really doesn't matter. It doesn't really affect the game. It's nothing, you know, I just mention it because someone will probably bring it up if I don't, but it doesn't really hurt the game. I'm sure the story was better in the original version, but, you know, for a side-scrolling action game, it's really not that important. Uh, you can pick up and throw the enemies. That's really cool. I find that the physical attacks do a hell of a lot more damage, but and look at all this chaos. The first time I played it, I was overwhelmed by all the action on screen and all the explosions. Like, the entire screen is just one big explosion. But the more I played it, the more I got used to it, and the less, you know, overwhelmed it seemed. Overwhelming it seemed. Now, especially with two players, like, the entire screen at times will just be nothing but explosions. But, you know, once you get into the game and know what's going on, uh, it's not a problem at all. You can barely hear the music over my fanboy ranting and gushing over this game, but the music is really stellar in this title. Uh, I'm one of those people who thinks the Super Nintendo has significantly better sound, but this game really makes the uh, audio of the Sega Genesis shine. Treasure really did a good job with this title. And here's the uh, stage that's the boss fight is basically playing a board game. It's very interesting and unique. I always like juggling that die around. So you basically roll the die and uh, you get, yeah, you get different options. So you got this incoming boss and you gotta fight him. And There's this one that's really hard to beat and it seems like every time I play I get him. I think I lucked out on this uh, footage. And occasionally, if the gods are with you and luck smiles upon you, you can get through this entire uh, board game thing without too much difficulty. But more often than not, you're going to get your ass handed to There's some difficult fights. Like, I think one time I uh, got almost to the end boss of this and had to go back to the beginning, and it was pretty crushing. Either way, I give this game a super enthusiastic Mondo Pool. This is one of the best Sega Genesis titles, hands down. Uh, you need to own it. Don't pay what it goes for on the internet. Try to look for it and get some deals. But as always, I've got more videos and reviews on the way. That's right, boys. Mondo Cool.